Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down below. That will make you part of my crafty family here on YouTube. And don't forget you can sign up for my free newsletter over at CorinneBlackstone.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you a really fun thing that you can do using screen print transfers. I'm going to show you guys how to make them reusable. This is a great thing to do if you run your own business because you won't have to constantly be wasting vinyl to put the same design on a screen when you can just use some HTV. We made this screen just using some Caesar Easy Weed HTV and it's really, really simple. Replacing your screens in these is also super simple, but you will need to make sure that you have a splining tool. This is the tool that I have and I'll link one down below. These are super important to do this. It just makes it a lot easier to put the splining back in behind the screen. You'll also need some screen print ink. This is Speedball. This is my favorite screen print ink. You'll need a squeegee, some cardstock, a spoon, a shirt of your choice. You can do any kind that you want, any color, any style, whatever makes you happy. And you're going to want to make sure that you have some scrap cardstock on hand as well as some sort of heat source because you will need to heat set your design. This is a super fun thing that you guys can do and like I said it's a great way to keep the same stencil and use it over and over again. So let's get started. In Design Space what you're going to do is open up a new canvas and click upload. Then you're going to click upload image and browse. You'll find where you saved your image anywhere on your computer. I saved mine under my animals folder in my Cricut folder and then I need to find the dog um, quote bundle which is right here and go into the SVGs. Now depending on how your designer put their folder together it may be a little bit confusing but you'll find it. It's no big deal. So um, what I'm going to do is choose the one I want and I want if my dog can't come I'm not going and go ahead and click upload. Select the image and click insert images. Now this is broken up into tons of tons and tons of pieces. And so right now, if you click make it, you'll see that it's going to be a big mess. And we don't want that, especially because this is gonna be a screen print transfer. So what I need to do is click cancel. Now there's a couple things that you can do. You can either just attach it or you can click weld. Because this is so many pieces over here on my layers tab, do you see how many that is? I'm gonna go ahead and use the weld option for this. That way it makes it all one piece. And since we already own the SVG for this, if we did wanna change anything for any reason, you know, when we go back to use this as something more like a decal or something, because this is a screen print transfer, I'm just gonna go ahead and weld it. Once you've welded it, and saved it, you can't undo anything, but we're again, we're not gonna change this. So this is the really simple part. Now, typically with HTV, you would want to mirror it, but in this case, we are not going to mirror our HTV because we're gonna put that on the back of the screen. I think it'll make a little bit more sense as to why we're not mirroring when you guys see how this is assembled. So what you'll do now is size it to whatever size you wanna make it. So let's make this one big enough to go on an adult shirt. We'll go like right about nine inches. Now what I love about these reusable versions is that you can make tons and tons of shirts with this design. So if you're a seller on Etsy or at your local markets, you can do these items very quickly, not having to constantly cut stencils, not having to cut SVGs out all the time. You can cut it one time and reuse it over and over again. Screen printing is a great way to save money. It's a lot less expensive than doing HTV and especially if you use the same design lots and lots of times. So now what we're gonna do is click make it. Now an important thing to do before we hit continue is to move our design just a little bit on our screen. We don't want it right at the top of our page and we don't write it, want it right on like that left hand side. So I move it down about half an inch and over about half an inch because when you go to put this on your screen, you're gonna want that little bit of a border around it, and I'll show you guys why. But that way your paint doesn't bleed over your screen. So it's really important to have a small amount of a border around your design. So again, we're not gonna mirror this, so don't worry. We're gonna hit continue and get ready to cut this out. 
We're gonna cut this on Caesar Easy Weed, and the color doesn't matter at all. If you've got something like a color that you bought and you just don't like it, or you have a ton of a color, color won't matter. But you're gonna cut this on the everyday iron-on setting, and you'll see here that it says make sure mirror is turned on. Don't worry, again, we're not gonna mirror this because of the way this is set up. So you're gonna cut this just with your fine point blade, and you can cut this on any machine that you have, silhouette, you can use this on the Joy, you can use this on the Maker, you can use this on the Explore, but this is a project you can do on any machine. So let's go over to the machine. I'm going to show you how to load your HTV and we'll get it all cut out. The first thing that you need to do is to load your HTV. So again, this is just Caesar Easy Weed. I'm just using orange. I don't use a lot of orange. So what you're going to do is just like you would any other time, load it with the carrier sheet side down and then we're going to line it up on our mat. I am doing a terrible job of this today. I'm gonna flip it this way. I usually have a better time if I do it towards me. Um, so you're gonna line it up with the top of your mat. And then press it down. And we'll open the machine. She's already on. And when you load your mat, you wanna give a little bit of pressure from the back of your mat and make sure that it's under the two tabs on the sides. Go ahead and insert your mat. And I'll let you guys watch this cut. This should cut pretty quickly, then we can weed it. And I'll show you guys the special way that we need to weed this as well. When you go to weed this, you're going to weed it a little bit differently than you would normally weed. Instead of weeding out the background, you're going to weed out the words. So I'm going to leave it on the mat for now and then we'll cut out the design when we're done. So all I'm going to do is just leave, weed out all of the letters. And the basics of this is to think about it in the way of what part of this design are you going to want to show on your shirt. So if you're going to screen print this, you need to make sure that all the spots where you want the ink to go through are removed. So in this case, we are removing all of the letters, which is where we want the screen print ink to go through. So I'll go ahead and finish weeding this out for you guys, and then we can press it onto our screen print. Now that you're done weeding this out, we can trim this down. Now again, we wanna leave some leeway around our design for any of the ink. So what I'm gonna do is I got an X-Acto knife here. This is probably one of my favorite things that I use, and I'm just gonna cut a line down this side. It doesn't have to be straight. We're not really worried about that. And then again, I wanna leave some space below the word going. So I'm just gonna cut a line across the bottom here. And I do this right on my cutting mat because your cutting mat can handle the cut of an X-Acto knife. Don't do this directly on your table. I do not recommend. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this off here. And I've got a weird little cut up here at the top, so I'm just going to kind of rip that off. It's probably just from when they cut it at the factory, so we'll just pop that off. No worries. We don't need it. So we can set that over to the side. So this is the part that we need. So go ahead and pull this off our mat. Now, what we're going to do is cut some screen to fit within our screen. The next thing that we'll need to do is cut the actual screen part to fit within our screen frame. So this is the screen frame that I have. This is a speedball screen frame. You can see it's well loved. But what I'm going to do first is pop out this screen, the original one. And all I'm going to do is pull this out. Now you're going to need a couple tools to do this. Yours should already have, I'll link all the stuff I'm using down below, but you should already have this splining within your screen. So just be careful when you remove that because we're going to keep that and reuse it. So what I'm going to do is pop this out. And you don't want to get rid of your original screen. Make sure you keep that on hand because we're going to keep that for any time we want to do anything that we don't need a new screen for. And this is a really inexpensive thing that you can do, and it's really, really easy. So I'm going to go ahead and finish pulling this out. Again, hang on to this because we'll save this. This one's kind of dirty from like staining from the ink, so you can kind of see it on there, but we'll save that one. And then we'll set the screen and the original spline over to the side because we will need those in just a minute. 
And we can use this guy to kind of figure out how big we need to cut the large sheet. So this is just a sheet of screen print screen from Amazon. And it, it comes in a pretty big section. So this is really great because you can make a ton of screens. You can see there's tons and tons of screen here, which I love because you can cut them a little bit bigger than you need to in order to make sure that it's going to fit your screen, which for me is always important because I'm terrible at measuring. So, oh, got a lot of screen. There's a ton, there's a lot here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of lay my screen out and I know it's a little tough to see cause it's white on white, but it's, it's not hard to see once you're in person. And I'm gonna lay my other screen on top of it. This is a really, really slippery fabric. So you'll wanna make sure that you're holding it down. And so I'm just gonna set my screen on top and just see like about how big it is. You can see that it's like not straight and that's okay because it really doesn't matter. I just need a general idea of how large I wanna cut this. And like I said, I'm gonna cut this bigger than the original screen because again, I can't cut a straight line to save my life. And I wanna make sure that it's gonna go in the screen with the splining. So now that I've kind of got an idea of how big it needs to be, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out. Again, this is super slippery. So be very aware of that when you're cutting it. And it's really easy to cut through. Like you can just kind of slide your scissors right through. Once you're done with that, you can put all your extra screen to the side and you now have your screen. So I'm just gonna do a quick double check and make sure, cause we may need to trim off a little bit of the edge or just kind of figure out which way this has to sit. Because you can see that my um, image is a little bigger than the screen on the edges. So we may need to trim off some HTV and that's okay. That's not a big deal. But I just wanna make sure that everything will fit within my screen and it will. So we're good. We're gonna trim off a little bit of the edge on these. I do tend to leave a lot of edge and you really need to make sure that you don't have any of your HTV going under your screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off some edge. Again, this is why I use a color that I don't really use a lot because you don't want to get, you know, you don't wanna waste a color you really like. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double check that this is gonna fit within the screen. It should now, uh, yes, perfect. Okay, good. So this one's really big and that's the one thing I like about this, but you can make these with really small ones as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the side. Now what we're gonna do is take our screen and our image. I'm actually gonna put our screen down first. And I'm gonna lay my image face down. So it's gonna be sticky side down. So this is our carrier sheet side. And I'm gonna press it down a little bit, but it's not really going to stick because it doesn't like to stick to screen. So get some heat tape because this is a great tool that you will want to keep in your craft room. Let's just get some heat tape and we're gonna tape this down to our screen. This will help hold your HTV down when you go to press it on your heat press. And heat tape is made to get hot in a heat press. So you'll be fine to use this to press this down. So we'll just go ahead and get this all set down. You wanna make sure that your screen is flat, neat and nice. Okay, good. Now you're gonna press this just like you would press regular HTV, but I am gonna put a piece of parchment paper behind my, um, press just to be safe. We shouldn't have any issues, but it's best to protect your press anytime you can. And then we'll have a Teflon sheet on the top, but we're gonna go ahead and press this. This presses at 305 for 15 to 20 seconds. So I'm gonna go take you over to the heat press so we can press this. I've got this set on a piece of cardstock just to protect my press, just in case any of the adhesive leaks through. And then I've got it set on a decently light pressure. I don't wanna do anything too crazy with it because you don't wanna over press it. And I'm just gonna press it for a few seconds um, and then just check on it and see how it's doing because I did this before and some of the adhesive leaked out and so it wasn't great. So once you've pressed, you can take your um, backing off. I like to just do a quick check on it, make sure it looks like it's pressed down. It looks pretty good. And it's gonna look a little bit wrinkly just depending on what kind of HTV you use. I'm not a big fan of the Easy Weed for this, but it does work pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off. And you wanna do this part pretty slow. You just wanna make sure that everything is stuck down. You can always add a little more press if you need to. But the nice thing is because this is like a really light screen, you don't need a full press on this, which is really good. So like I said, I just go really slow to pull this off just to be safe. 
but you see how like it looked wrinkled really really wrinkled with the pressing um with the carrier sheet on and then when you take it off it's not at all wrinkled that's just the nature of this product it's what it does don't worry it is pressed it just looks a little crazy with the backing on so like I said I always just do a quick double check I make sure that everything looks like it's pressed on there it looks like it's well pressed except maybe right at that very top and it's easy to see because you'll notice that you have like a lighter spot I don't know if you guys can see that real well but there's a little bit of a lighter spot so sometimes if I have that what I'll do is I just put it back in my press just for a few more seconds you don't need to do anything crazy just give it another quick little press and that way you'll make sure everything's well adhered Again, you don't need to press it for a very long time, just for a few seconds. And you can see now you have a really well pressed. I've done this several times and I did a lot of trial and error to make sure that this was gonna press well. And now it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys how to put this on your actual screen so that we can make our screen print transfer. Now what we need to do is attach the screen to the wooden frame. So you'll need to get some thumbtacks, any thumbtack will do. I've got some decorative ones and regular ones. So what I'm gonna do is hold my screen and I'm gonna hold it real tight so you can see I'm kind of pulling it pretty tight across here. And I'm gonna tack it down on one side with my thumbtack. And you wanna tack it outside of the track where you're gonna put the splining just so that it's not in the way when you go to do the splining. Then grab a second thumbtack and you're gonna tack this side down. And I'm gonna do the top and the bottom as well. Again, I'm just pulling it pretty darn tight while I do this, just to make sure that it doesn't get any wrinkles. And you can put extra tacks, like if you wanna put a tack here in the corner to help you. Whatever makes you feel comfortable that you're gonna be able to get this in there nice and tight. If you've ever done like a replacement screen on your house or something like that, same kind of concept as that that we're doing here. I do like to give a few extra um, that thumbtacks just to be safe. You don't have to push them in too far, just enough. And I'm gonna spin this around so I can reach it a little bit better. And again, I'm just making sure to pull it fairly tight. And I'm gonna go ahead and tack it. And I'm gonna put one here in the middle. And again, you don't have to do this many. I just like to do extras because I'm not excellent at screening these yet. It does take some practice, so Keep that in mind when you're doing these. You're not gonna be perfect the first time. So you slide those out of the way. So remember, I told you to hold on to that white splining that you pulled out of your screen originally because we're gonna put it right back in. Because why waste it? It's still good. And you're gonna need this cool little tool. You can get these at any hardware store, Amazon. I'll link this one down below if I can find the same one. This is my husband's, but this is a really helpful tool when doing this. It's really the best way to do this. So once you have a tack down about where you want it, just take your splining tool, and this has two different sides. So it's got the side that has like a divot in the wheel, and then a side that doesn't have the divot. I like to use the divot side with these, and you wanna make sure that your splining is the right direction. So you'll have sections that are longer than others if you're using a rectangular screen. So just make sure to pay attention to that when you're going to put your uh, screen back together, that you have the splining the correct way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this pretty tight. And I'm pushing my spline down. This part is super duper easy. And don't worry if it's a little bit like off center, it's fine. We'll center it more when we actually do the um, screen print itself. So it's fine if it's a little bit off center. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this. It's just a little easier for me if I turn it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get that screen nice and taut there. Make sure everything is held down. And I'm gonna go through and put the spline in. So again, just pushing down on the spline. This doesn't take a lot of um, muscle or anything. It's just kind of rolling over it, pushing down just a little bit and pushing your spline in. Now I'm gonna move out that thumbtack cause he's in the way and keep going around. This is again, a really simple thing. You guys can totally do this. And don't worry if it's not like, like I said, not perfectly straight, that's okay. It's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be. It just needs to be pretty tight because you want a nice tight fit for your shirt and then we'll come through and trim off all this excess that way it's not going to be an issue when we go to put this on our shirt so again just pushing my spline down and you can see how it's pulling the screen nice and tight that's exactly what we want and done now you just want to come in like i said you want to come in and trim off this excess because this can actually cause it to sit kind of funny on your shirt or you can end up with 
um, parts that are, you know, under your stencil. If you are somebody who can actually cut a nice straight line or can cut these measured really nice, more power to you. I am not that person. But I'm going to cut off just a little bit of extra. And remember, you can totally reuse these, so that's really nice. So I try to leave a little bit behind so that when I go to put this back in, I can reuse it pretty easy. But I don't want to trim, I don't want to cut, you know, I don't want to leave a ton on here because it will end up making a bit of a, a mess when you try to use it. So that's pretty good. See how I left a little bit of overhang here? Can you see that? And a little bit of overhang over here. That, that way when you go to put this back on a screen to reuse it again, you can do that. So this is a super duper easy thing to do. I'm going to go ahead and put all these thumbtacks away. And then I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to use this to screen print. It's super easy, really fun, and then we'll wash it off and reuse it. Another important step to do before you start screen printing is to cover any of these areas here that you have that you don't want to get the ink going through. So like the top and the bottom and the side, we've got a little bit of a gap here. So I'm just going to be extra careful and put a little piece of tape there. And then I'm going to tape up the bottom and I'm just using painter's tape. You can use masking tape works really, really well as well, but you just want to tape up any spots that you don't want to have any paint go through. So you can be as coverage as you want, or you can kind of just leave it as B. So I ran out of painter's tape, so I'm going to use some masking tape because masking tape works as well. Kind of whatever, you know, kind of papery tape you have will work, but I'm going to use some masking tape just to make sure. I am definitely a messier screen printer than I like to admit, so I like to put a couple extra spots of tape on here because I just, I know that the one time I don't do this that I will make a mess. So I just like to make sure that I've covered all of my spots that might get paint through them. Um, the one thing to keep in mind too is that I like to put this on the back of it. That way this paint doesn't splooch through and you just want to make sure that it's laying really flat. And then we can take this tape off, which is nice too. So you can, um, you don't have to worry about like making a mess. It's really easy to do. And we'll go ahead and just tape all of that up. So now that that's all taped, you can lay it on your shirt. I'm just using a Cricut shirt because I have a ton of these. I'm kind of on sale, so I figured I'd use one of these. And we are going to use some speedball screen printing. So what I want to do is I'm going to lay this down. And I can feel where my um, collar is. And I just want to lay this about three fingers down from my collar. And then I want to center it best I can. You want to put a piece of cardstock between your shirt. Sometimes the screen print ink can bleed through. So then you just want to make sure that this is straight. You want to make sure that the decal is straight, not so much the um, screen itself. Because if your decal isn't straight, then nothing will be straight. I think that looks pretty straight. So now we just need to choose our color. I've got a bunch of colors here. I've got blue, I've got black, I've got red. Now that we have our stencil down, we are going to use some speedball ink. I'm going to use red because it just sounds fun. And um, this is a water-based ink. It's really easy to use. I didn't have any spoons, so I'm using a fork, but it'll work. And all I'm going to do is go ahead and open this. Now, when you first get them, they have a plastic seal on them, so you'll want to make sure to pop that off. But once you've done that, now I like to give mine a little bit of a mix here at the top just to make sure that everything's kind of off the edges. And then all you're going to do is take a generous amount of ink and splatter it over here at the top. And you want to go all the way across your screen because you're going to cover the whole design with this ink. And don't worry if you get some ink on the wood part, it's fine. Um, your wood might stain a little bit, but like that's the nature of crafting. It's going to be a little messy, but that's okay. So like I said, I use a generous amount of ink. So I'm going to go ahead and take that and I'm going to set off these to the side. Now I have a large squeegee, but you could use a small one if that's all you have. But this is just a large speedball squeegee and this is a really handy tool to have. So. I highly recommend it. Now what you're going to do is hold your screen down with one hand and take your other hand and pull your screen print ink down. Now I'm just going to go ahead and just lightly do this the first time. Just a nice light coat. 
And then I'm going to tap off that excess ink and then I'm going to go back the other direction, pressing harder this time because you want to make sure that all of the ink goes through. Now, like I said, you're going to have excess ink, so don't worry. We'll scrape all that off. And I'm going to have an extra little scraper to get some of that off as well because it does tend to get on these little edges and it's not always super easy to get that off. So then you just go down and up a couple times. You want to make sure that you've got all of your design fully covered. I think that looks pretty covered. Uh, we could maybe use a little bit more over here in the cant. So if you see a spot that you could use a little more ink, just grab some ink with your squeegee and press down. And you see how I'm doing it kind of a downward angle. You don't have to press real hard. Just a light press will do. And once you think you've gotten enough ink on there, what I'm gonna do is take my scraper and run it along the, the paint pot here to get excess ink off. Now I do recommend having a piece of cardstock or a um, like scrap piece of paper or something to lay this on. I'm just gonna use some copy paper just to lay this down just so it doesn't get everywhere. And then I'm gonna take my smaller scraper and that's gonna help me get a lot of the ink off the edges and stuff because you don't wanna waste it and really you don't have to. You can just go ahead and scrape all this extra ink out and we'll just go ahead and do that. Any ink left behind you can just wash down because it's water-based. It's not gonna, it's not toxic. So that's really, really nice. So all I'm gonna do, let me finish scraping all of my extra ink off. I got a lot of extra ink on here. Um, if you have a ton, you can definitely use like the fork to help get it off, whatever you need to do, but make sure your screen isn't moving while you're doing this. Um, you can always try to move this off your shirt and put it on a piece of cardstock to clean it, but I don't find that actually works real great for me. I prefer to do it this way. I seem to get a lot more ink off of it this way. So again, I'm just scraping it around, pulling off as much of this excess ink as I can get. I have a huge glob that I'm trying to play with. So I'll go ahead and finish this up and then I'll show you guys how to pull up your screen and um, then we'll wash the screen while the shirt dries. Once you have got all your extra ink off, now you may have some ink on your hands, so be careful. Make sure that you're touching your shirt with parts that don't have ink on them. So for me, I've got a little ink on my finger, so I'm gonna hold my shirt down with one hand and then I'm just gonna pull this up, straight up. And we did get a little sploogy over there. It's okay though, no big deal. I think it looks real, real cute. So what we'll do now is we will let this dry and as this dries, we can clean our screen. So I'll take you guys over and show you guys how to wash your screen. To wash your screen, you're just gonna use some lukewarm water. It's real easy to do. So make sure you have any jewelry or anything off because you are gonna get ink on your hands. And this is where you'll peel your tape off as well. I like to do it as I'm washing. That way there's not as much ink all over. So again, I'm gonna turn on some lukewarm water. And I like to start from the back of my screen. So I just give it a good quick rinse from the back side. And then we'll go to the front. But again, like I said, I like to peel off the tape after I rinse this a bit, just because then there's a little bit less ink making such a mess all over everywhere. So just keep that in mind. It's up to you how you wanna do it, but I like to rinse and then peel my tape. So you can see I'm just running it under this water. And my screen's a little bit big um, for my sink. We have a kind of a tiny sink. So you can use your hands because this comes right off. Again, it's water-based. You're not gonna stain your hands or anything like that. And I just give it a good rinse. And as it's rinsing, the tape will kind of start to release. So as it does that, you can kind of peel it off. So like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and see this piece, we can just peel it right off. And then it'll probably peel some more tape, it's fine. So like I said, just rinse, and once it's rinsed and clean, you're gonna let it sit over to the side and dry. You don't want to try to dry this with um, like a heat gun or a hair dryer or anything like that because you will damage it. Um, so don't do that. This is not made to really um, withstand that kind of heat. So just let it air dry. Um, you can always pop this out of the um, screen if you wanna use your screen again. If you're gonna do multiple designs and you're gonna use it, you can just put in a new screen, it's totally easy to do. But this is a great way to do it if you're using a screen multiple times. 
once you've allowed your shirt to dry, I let mine dry overnight, but usually four hours or so will do, you wanna go ahead and heat set this. Now you can use a regular iron, your easy press, but since I have a heat press, I'm just gonna use that. I have a piece of paper over this, so that little splooge didn't come out as well as I'd hoped. So I'm gonna try to just see if this'll stop it from getting too hot and it might wash out. It's no big deal. I could have used a stain remover, but I don't have one. So what I'm going to do is I have my heat press set to about 320 degrees, and I'm going to press it for 40 seconds with just a medium pressure. You don't have to, like, press press this, um, but I do have a pressing pillow under it. So all we're going to do is just go ahead and give it a quick press. Once you're done with the heat set, you can go ahead and remove it from your heat press, and then you can wash this just like normal. So it's a really easy project to do. This is a super fun shirt. I had a blast making this, and now I can reuse that stencil over and over again. Here is the finished shirt. I washed it, came out really, really good, so just keep that in mind. Washing it is super easy. Again, we used the water-based speedball ink linked down below in the description, and just some HTV to make this. This was such a fun project, and what I love is that I can now use this screen over and over again and not have to worry about recutting, weeding, and making it every time I want to make this design. Again, this is a great option if you are a t-shirt maker who sells your shirts. What I love about screen print is that it doesn't feel heavy on the shirt, and it's actually part of the shirt versus HTV, which sometimes can feel a little bit thick and heavy on the shirt. You can also do multiple colors. There's tons of options. I'll put my screen printing playlist down below in the video's description for you guys. I hope you had a great time, and if you have any questions about this or any any other crafty project, let me know in those comments down below. I hope you guys have a great day and happy crafting!